Piriformis syndrome, a hidden cause of sciatica. What is piriformis syndrome? Piriformis syndrome is controversial, but it's becoming popular, and this syndrome is not clearly understood. It is a condition of leg pain or sciatica due to compression of the sciatic nerve at the hip. The sciatic nerve is compressed and irritated, not due to spine problems that affect the nerve roots of the sciatic nerve. In piriformis syndrome, the compression and irritation occurs from problems related to the piriformis muscle. Piriformis syndrome is a diagnosis of exclusion. The patient may have localized buttock pain increased by sitting or driving. The patient will have symptoms of sciatica and also a patient will have an MRI of the spine that is negative that proves that the patient symptoms are not associated with disc herniation. The sciatica is probably from the piriformis syndrome, but you must look at the spine first. Diagnosis of piriformis syndrome is made clinically with pain in the posterior gluteal region. The piriformis syndrome clearly can be confused with sciatica and lower back pain due to disc herniation. A high index of suspicion in patient with buttock or leg pain in the absence of lumbar pathology. This pain is increased while sitting with minimal or no back pain. In fact, it may be hard to differentiate between piriformis syndrome and lumbar disc herniation because both problems can cause sciatica. We must understand that irritation of the sciatic nerve may occur at multiple sites. And the first site to look at is the spine, where irritation of the sciatic nerve occurs due to disc herniation, which will cause lumbar radiculopathy and true sciatica. How about the piriformis muscle? What is the story of the piriformis muscle? The piriformis muscle arises from the anterolateral aspect of the sacrum and is inserted into the posterior aspect of the greater trochanter, deep into the buttock. Sciatic nerve initially emerges from the pelvis and it exits the greater sciatic notch anteriorly and below the piriformis muscle. The pain associated with piriformis syndrome is usually deep in the buttock and posterior thigh. It may also include the posterior aspect of the leg because the sciatic nerve goes from the buttock down all the way to the thigh and to the leg. So when the piriformis irritates the sciatic nerve, the pain may go down to the back of the leg. And that pain would be worse with flexion, adduction, and internal rotation of the hip. The patient will complain of pins and needles down the leg, and confusion may occur, and the patient may be misdiagnosed as having a lumbar disc herniation. So in the presentation, the patient will have pain in the posterior aspect of the buttock, and the pain will be shooting down the back of the leg. The pain may be aching, burning, or shooting, very similar to symptoms of sciatica. Sciatica is pain radiating along the course of the sciatic nerve, which runs from the lower back to the buttock, to the back of the thigh, and into the lower leg and the foot. It usually affects one side of the body and it is usually called lumbar radiculopathy. Sciatica is not a diagnosis, it is a symptom of an underlying condition. The condition can be piriformis syndrome or it can be lumbar disc herniation.
the causes of piriformis syndrome is not fully understood. Be aware of possible anatomical variation of the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve can be compressed by the piriformis muscle, by fibrous bands, or by vascular anomalies. There may be anatomic anomalies that may contribute to the compression, which will include variation in the sciatic nerve or divided piriformis. These are the four types of variations. The normal relationship with the sciatic nerve passing beneath the piriformis muscle. The second variation, the piriformis is divided into two parts with the pineal division of the sciatic nerve passing between the two parts of the piriformis muscle. The third anatomic variation, the pineal division of the sciatic nerve passes over the muscle and the tibial division passes beneath the undivided piriformis muscle. And the fourth division, the entire nerve passes through a divided piriformis muscle. Tightness or spasm of the piriformis muscle will squeeze the sciatic nerve. The patient may have localized buttock pain increased by sitting or driving. It may be caused by overuse activities such as bicycling. The pressure being placed on the nerve will cause swelling and inflammation. So what are the tests that are commonly used to diagnose piriformis syndrome? The Lesugue's maneuver stretches the sciatic nerve and the Feder test stretches the piriformis. In the Lesugue maneuver, you reproduce the pain by flexing the hip of the patient to 90 degrees while keeping the knee extended. The test can be done with the patient supine or on the side. There is a value of doing the test with the patient on the side. When you do the test with the patient on the side, it allows you to examine the location of the pain, which will be directly over the piriformis muscle. How about the Feder test? Feder test is not the Faber test. The Faber test is used to diagnose the sacroiliac joint. The Faber test is used to diagnose the piriformis syndrome. The test is done by stretching the piriformis muscle to see if it is causing irritation and pressure on the sciatic nerve and reproduce the patient's symptoms. So how do you do stretching of the piriformis muscle? by flexing, adducting, and internally rotating the hip, the piriformis in the back. So if you reproduce that position, that will stretch the piriformis muscle and cause symptoms by compressing the sciatic nerve because you will put tension on the muscle and reproduce the patient's symptoms. Straight leg raising test is the gold standard as a clinical test to diagnose disc herniation that's irritating the sciatic nerve. Elevation of a painful lower limb can cause sciatica and radicular pain. The straight leg raising pain is aggravated by forced ankle dorsiflexion. If the straight leg test is positive, we can consider a spine problem. We can actually think that surgery may be helpful to the patient. A neated disc is typically the source of static pain. Patient that undergoes surgery to remove a herniated disc will get better from surgery if there is a positive straight leg raising test before the surgery. Sometimes this test is called stretch test because it's stretching the nerve, and if the nerve is irritated by disc herniation, then the test becomes positive, and the patient will have pain from lifting that lower limb. This information is about the disc. Diagnosis of piriformis syndrome. 
high index of suspicion, patient history and exam, EMG, not helpful. The MRI, you may find enlarged performance muscle, anomalies of the vessels, compression of the sciatic nerve, diagnostic injection may be helpful. If the patient does not have a herniated disc on the MRI and the patient has symptoms of sciatica, then the patient probably have piriformis syndrome. In the treatment, aquatic therapy, physiotherapy, anti-inflammatory medications, and injections. So when we do the injection, ultrasound or under fluoroscopy, make sure the patient has someone present with them to drive them home because the sciatic nerve may become affected by the numbing medicine and the patient will be unable to drive home. Surgery is done at the last resort and after you exclude all other possible spine conditions and after you have a positive test from injection of the piriformis muscle, the patient must acknowledge that they feel better from the injection. Release of the piriformis muscle, sciatic nerve neurolysis. Consider the possibility of piriformis syndrome when treating trochanteric bursitis or in patient with sciatica, especially after failed spine surgery. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.